Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to CAFE. I'm Clarence Reynolds. And I'm Allison Godlove. Happy New Year to you. It's great to be back with you to share all the fun and exciting events happening this week. Let's start off with Amy Sweezy. She is at the Orlando Science Center. Hey, Amy. Fine, but I sure am going to dig for it. Hey, sorry to interrupt, Amy. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. How are hey, you? Good to nice see you. to see you. Hey, everybody. This is my friend Jeff Stanford from the Orlando Science Center. I couldn't wait. Sorry, I had to start digging. You are actually doing what you're supposed to do in this oh, exhibit. So, uh, no, you're right. You're right on point. Okay. So this. Tell me where we're standing. What are we doing here at Dino Digs? And well, we are standing in Jurassic Ridge, which is our giant dig pit, because Orlando Science Center is a hands-on museum. We, we play to learn here at Orlando Science Center. Uh, and we are in the middle of our dinosaur exhibit. And most traditional dinosaur exhibits, you look at displays. You don't touch those displays. So we've added things within Dino Digs to increase that hands-on interactivity. And one of them is a dig pit where uh, guests, especially children, can dig for fossils and play the role of paleontologists. You know, I love that because as a parent, usually that's what they're always doing. Don't touch it, don't touch it, get down. <laughs> but here you encourage the kids to get their hands dirty. Absolutely. Uh, we feel that people learn more by doing. And, and we present these iconic experiences that stimulate curiosity and wonder. And that's a gateway to learning. So uh, that is uh, the hallmark of Orlando Science Center. So what is your favorite exhibit here inside Dino Digs? My favorite exhibit inside Dino Digs is Stan the T-Rex. He's the centerpiece of the exhibit. You've got to love the T-Rex. And uh, our fossil display is based on the original Stan. Uh, all our fossils are replicas because the real fossil displays would be too big and too fragile to display like we have them. But Stan is one of the most complete fossil displays ever and so we're thrilled to be able to show off uh, our stand for guests here at Dino Digs. Anything else that the kids are really fascinated by? I think what's really cool about Dino Digs is it celebrates prehistoric land and sea creatures and when you think dinosaurs you think only the land creatures like T-Rex, Triceratops, but uh, we have a great display of prehistoric sea creatures like the Elasmosaurus because in prehistoric times, Florida was underwater. And so we like showing off Elasmosaurus. It's got this incredibly long neck. A lot of people speculate that this may be where people thought the Loch Ness Monster may have come ah, from. Okay. So it's, it's really cool to show a different perspective on dinosaurs. Awesome. Well, I would love to see everything. Can we go take a yeah, look? Yeah, let's go take a look. All right. And now I got something really crappy to show you. Come on. Wait, what? Well, Jeff, you were not kidding. You have something very crappy to show me. I do. I am <laughs> going to give you the scoop on poop. We are in the Puseum, which is a fascinating display of caprolites, which is fossilized feces. And there's a lot scientists can learn by studying the feces of other animals and uh, like where they lived and what they ate. And we are next to the Guinness World Record holder of the largest piece of <laughs> excrement ever produced by a carnivore. Who knew there was such a thing? Absolutely. Which is why everyone needs to come down here because you will not see this anywhere else, right? No, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, it, it, if you want to see some uh, prehistoric poo, you know, you need, to, you need to come down here. This was made by a T-Rex over 65 million years ago. And the one you're holding in your hand, you said you could yes. tell it was a carnivore. You can tell it was a carnivore because there's, there's like chunks of stuff in it. So you know... <laughs> he was, they was eating they stuff. They were eating stuff. And, 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 and carnivores, uh, especially in prehistoric times, you know, they were chewing on everything so the bone wouldn't break down. And so, so certain things wouldn't disintegrate. So when it got fossilized, it all comes together. So copper lights are everywhere, but you got to know what you're looking at. 
All right. Well, so many things that we can learn, right, from being at the Orlando Science Center. You guys are open which days? Closed which days? Yeah, we are open during the school year every day but Wednesday okay. from 10 to 5. And then on big school breaks like fall break, winter break, spring break, summer break, we are open seven days a week, 10 to 5. All right. So dinosaur poo is not the only thing you will see here at the Orlando Science Center. There are so many cool exhibits for all ages. Parents bring your kids, teachers bring your school groups, uh, retired folks, right, can come out as well. There are so many fun things to do here. So make sure you join us out at the Orlando Science Center. You know, there are going to be so many things taking place in this new year that we can go and enjoy at the oh, yeah. Science Center. It's going to be good. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. Take a stroll through 50 acres at one of Orlando's most beautiful gardens. Harry P. Lou Gardens hosts holiday blooms through January 2nd. Hundreds of colorful and unique poinsettias and seasonal flowers create this magical garden. There's even a mistletoe station. Each year the display gets bigger and bigger, so expect to see more this year than you ever have before. Lou Gardens is open daily from 9 to 5. Creality School of Art in Winter Park presents Emerge, new works by photography, ceramics, and sculpture fellowship and studio artists. Emerging artists from those disciplines share the work they created during their work study exchange membership program. You can see their work at the Creality School of Art through January 28th. Also at Lou Gardens, Neverland, The Lost Adventure, presented by Creative City Project. This all-new immersive experience is fun for everyone in your family. You'll explore Neverland and come face-to-face -face with the characters who call it home. You'll follow them through a three-quarter mile theatrical journey and learn what it truly means to become one of Peter Pan's lost boys and girls. Visit creativecityproject.com to learn more. Head over to the Blue Bamboo Center for the Arts for its Jazz Pro Series featuring Tamir Hindelman. The award-winning jazz pianist presents a solo piano program that explores jazz standards, Brazilian music, and blues through the lens of his Israeli roots. Hindelman has performed with Barbara Streisand, Natalie Cole, Phil Upchurch, and Gladys Knight, to name a few. The performance is on January 4th at 8 p.m. Get tickets at bluebamboocenter.com. I had a really interesting chat with Omar El Kayubi from Give Kids the World. Take a look. We are joined by Omar El Kayubi from Give Kids the World to tell us what's happening at the beginning of this year in 2023. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So what events are happening in the first quarter of 2023? So we have some really fun and exciting things going on. In, uh, Feb on February 11th, we have the Valentine's edition of our, our gingerbread run. Uh, it's typically in December or November, um, but with a, a lot of other events happening, we decided to try a special edition, Valentine's edition. So you get to run through the village and experience um, all of the things or walk that the uh, families experience on a daily basis that give kids the world. How long is this run? It's a 5K. Okay, Yeah. yeah. I can do that. Yeah, it's not super long. You can walk it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Anything else going on? Um, yeah, and in April, um, right down the street from here at the Hyatt Regency, we'll be doing our 32-story rappel off of the Hyatt. It's a fundraiser for Give Kids the World. Um, so people can sign up, uh, register, and raise $1,000 a minimum, and then they get to rappel off the 32nd story of the Hyatt right on International Drive. And how do you determine which events you're going to do? Because uh, you could really do quite a few. They could be aimed at kids and then, or adults or families. What, what makes the, what's inspires? You? So our fundraising events span all sorts of types of things um, for all kinds of people. Uh, everything from holiday events to a reality star event that we do in December that's a meet and greet um, where 125 reality stars fundraise throughout the year and then they come do meet and greets with fans. Like I said, the 5K, we have a gala, um, we have the rappel, we have the Christmas light event. Um, so there's just an, a nice array of things and something for everybody and we are able to raise a lot of funds that keep the village running. So if you want to take advantage of any of these events, you'll be supporting Give Kids the World. Omar, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. We'll continue with the music theme and a performance by jazz vibraphonist and composer Chris Dingman at the Timakua Arts Foundation. You're invited to bring a bottle of wine and enjoy this one-of-a-kind solo tour as he explores the intersections of dream work, spiritualism, and meditation through music improvisation. The performance is on January 6th at 7.30. You can also buy live video stream tickets. Go to timakua.stellartickets.com to get those tickets. 
A special exhibition called Figurehead, Music and Mayhem in Orlando's Underground tells the story of how Orlando concert promoter Figurehead helped grow the local scene with a focus on underground rock music and the club circuit. The Figurehead Archives is now part of the Orange County Regional History Center's permanent collection. The exhibition showcases an impressive display of concert posters that captures the energy of that era. You can see what made this time in Orlando so memorable. It's happening now through September. Go behind the scenes in the world of racing at the Orlando Science Center for Hot Wheels Race to Win. You'll see the scientific process for designing super fast cars. You're going to check out some authentic race gear, see memorabilia, and have plenty of hands-on experiences. You can also design your own car and learn how things like wind resistance, track design, and building material can affect it. Suit up for the Pit Stop Challenge and complete a timed stock car pit stop. Check it out through January 8th. That sounds very cool. Oh, I love Hot Wheels. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You got to go check it out. You can do a pit oh, yeah, stop. Put yeah. the suit on. I oh, man. That, that, those orange tracks. Yeah, get I into it. I love those. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wraps up this week of events. And if you have one you'd like to share with us for next month, send us an email at cafe at ocfl.net. I'm Clarence Reynolds. And I'm Allison Godlove. Remember to join us next week to see what's new and exciting in your community.